Making movies is hard, messy work, and even the most well-regarded directors are prone to dropping a few stinkers now and then. Maybe because they've been around long enough where a couple of duds are inevitable, looking at you Spielberg, or we're budding new creatives who started out strong and lost their footing. Got your number, M. Night Shyamalan. However, there's a small selection of filmmakers, either long retired or still working today, who have never put a foot wrong. Somehow they've pulled off the unimaginable and enjoyed a career of constant success. And while some of their work is obviously better than others, they've been lucky enough to avoid releasing anything that's outright bad. Obviously though, I haven't seen the entire filmography of every director ever, so don't take this as an exhaustive list. And as a rule, I've kept it limited to directors who've made more than three movies. Sorry Ryan Coogler, I still love you. But regardless of that, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 directors who have never made a bad movie. Number 10. Edgar Wright. Known primarily for his comedies, Edgar Wright has never been confined by one genre, even defying them entirely in movies like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz are still the flicks he's perhaps most revered for, though we'll wait for it to all blow over jokes are getting a little old now guys. But outside of the so-called Cornetto trilogy, Wright has continued to edge closer to finally breaking the mainstream. His latest feature after infamously jumping ship on Ant-Man, the musically driven Baby Driver, was an unexpected hit and proved that the director has both the action and emotional chops needed to create serious movies that don't fall back on comedy as a crux. Wright's most contentious movie to date is undoubtedly The World's End, a flick which had the unenviable job of capping off the cult classic Cornetto trilogy. It's still a thoroughly good time though, and packs the biggest emotional punch of any of the director's movies so far. Number 9. Denis Villeneuve one of the hottest directors working today, and coming off the back of dropping one of the best sequels of all time, Denis Villeneuve has been creating unappreciated masterpieces for years now, gaining attention with foreign language epics like Polytechnic and Incendies before moving on to American-centric stories. Arrival was the film to properly break him into the mainstream though, and receive some rightly deserved praise in 2016, although I'll never be over Amy Adams being robbed at the Academy Awards, God damn it. His previous movies were just as good too, with Prisoners and Enemy gaining a dedicated following. While even Sicario, perhaps the shakiest Villeneuve has been since moving to American cinema, ended up being a deliciously twisted spin on big budget crime thrillers. Admittedly, it hasn't been a totally perfect run, and the director's very early work is a bit rough and unrefined. His distinctive fingerprints are still present though, and through these early efforts you can see him slowly find his feet and settle on a staple vision. Number 8. Quentin Tarantino From being a scrappy upstart and blowing the doors of Hollywood with the one-two punch of Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, to creating Wild West epics like Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight, every new QT project has served to completely shake up what audiences can expect from a Tarantino movie. Because while sure, there are staples that show up in every release, mile a minute dialogue, over the top violence and a liberal use of the n-word to name a few, the director reliably delivers some of the best original stories in Hollywood. Unfortunately, an over-reliance on his worst habits has sometimes hindered some of his movies, with Jackie Brown in particular occasionally feeling like it was made by another director doing their best QT impression, rather than Tarantino himself. Tarantino has often claimed that he'll retire after 10 movies so that he'll leave behind a flawless legacy, and if even Death Proof couldn't manage to derail that idea, he might actually do it. Number 7. Paul Thomas Anderson. Art house darling Paul Thomas Anderson has wowed critics with every release since he dropped Hard Eight in 1996, quickly going on to gain mainstream success soon after thanks to the double bill of Boogie Nights and Magnolia, the former of which Mark Wahlberg has since admitted he wished he never acted in, which means it must be good. Later works have been more ponderous than his early features, resulting in flicks which are difficult to grasp with only one viewing, like Phantom Thread or The Master that only makes them all the more impressive on subsequent rewatches. Hell, PTA is so good that he did the unthinkable back in 2002 with Punch Drunk Love. He made you realize that Adam Sandler can actually act. There have been blips here and there, with the erratic drug-fueled anarchy of inherent vice being viewed as an incomprehensible self-indulgent mess or a modern masterpiece depending on who you ask. But even that's not considered a total write-off. Number six, Hayao Miyazaki. 
the man who's become the face of the acclaimed animation house studio Ghibli, Hayao Miyazaki's expressionistic movies have shaped the childhood of an entire generation. While the likes of Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro were undeniably influential in legitimizing anime as a respected art form. Announcing his retirement numerous times throughout the years, Miyazaki always seems to have one movie left in him. Fortunately, that means that when he does return to head up another production, it's something he pours his heart and soul into, with this passion and creativity being felt in every frame of his movies, even the ones that don't quite reach the ridiculous heights of his most recognisable flicks. You'll be hard pressed to find a director more beloved than Miyazaki working today, and his name being attached to anything pretty much means that it'll be instantly adopted as the greatest thing of all time by his rabid fans. Number 5. Guillermo del Toro Although Guillermo del Toro has spent his entire career thus far creating mystifying original movies, the majority of them have been criminally overlooked by mainstream moviegoers. Sure, Pan's Labyrinth is viewed as one of the greatest films of the 2000s, but it took a long time to amass that reputation and recognition. While flicks like Hellboy and Pacific Rim enjoyed a strong critical reception, but failed to register at the box office. It's a shame, as nobody working today does genre flicks like del Toro, but it's exactly because of his love for fantasy, creature features, and dark fairy tales that he's rarely recognized in prestigious awards or ranked amongst other mainstream directors he's clearly just as good as, if not better than. Fortunately, the Oscar nominations The Shape of Water has received could be a sign that the times are a-changing, and will hopefully go a long way in validating genre directors more widely. Number 4. David Lynch from his debut with instant cult classic Eraserhead to his last feature film, 2006 Inland Empire, Lynch's career has birthed some of the most iconic characters, settings, and, weirdly enough, catchphrases in American cinema. However, the main differentiator between Lynch and his imitators, who have tried and failed to ape the intoxicatingly obtuse nightmares Lynch so vividly brings to life, is you always get the sense that he's having fun with his work. He understands how daft it is to have the good witch show up and wild at heart, or to put so much focus on the overly cheery grandparents in Mulholland Drive, but that inherent silliness never detracts from the impact and resonance of his abstract material. The director did make a couple of mistakes when he was first breaking into Hollywood, and the sci-fi epic Dune completely wasted his talents. But even at his worst, Lynch is still by far more interesting than the majority of filmmakers could ever hope to be. Number 3. Stanley Kubrick While the popular image of Kubrick is that of a serious auteur, who obsessively crafted dark, violent tales like The Shining, Eyes Wide Shut and A Clockwork Orange, his full body of work is much more diverse and often lighter than you'd expect. In fact, from establishing the framework of every modern sci-fi film with 2001 A Space Odyssey to cranking out hilarious black comedies like Doctor Strangelove, there wasn't a genre Kubrick didn't master. His earliest features lacked the visual flair and narrative preoccupations which would later define him, but they're still solid movies in their own right, and acted as a playground for the budding visionary to hone his skills in. Likewise, Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut don't have the same polish as his go-to classics, but the latter in particular still boasts some of the most provocative and daring material in the director's entire back catalogue. Number 2. Akira Kurosawa Perhaps best known for his samurai stories like Yojimbo and Seven Samurai, Akira Kurosawa's influence on the medium is unparalleled, and it's not contentious to say that a good majority of the filmmakers on this list wouldn't be as great as they are if it wasn't for his work. From the 1940s through to the 1960s, Kurosawa released much-watch movies every couple of years, jumping around genres to deliver standouts like the crime thriller Stray Dog and the romantically tinged The Idiot, while also regularly returning to the samurai story stories that made him a household name. He wound down in his later years, but his ambition never waned. If anything, some of his final movies such as Rana arguably is best, acting as a culmination of everything the director learned over the years to create genuine epics that constantly push the boundaries of what cinema could be. Number 1. Christopher Nolan Whoa, hang on, before you bite my head off, Chris Nolan topping out this list doesn't mean he's the best director ever but it means that he's perhaps the most consistently enjoyable, delivering astonishingly unconventional indie thrillers like Following and Memento before moving on to big-budget studio fare. 
arguably creating the best superhero trilogy of all time in the process. Nolan is one of the only creatives in Hollywood today with the freedom to create big budget, original concept blockbusters. Consequently, audiences have been given everything from brilliant, intelligent sci-fi like Inception to sparse, harrowing war tales like Dunkirk with even overlooked gems such as Insomnia deserving more recognition. Interstellar was probably the closest the directors come to making a movie that wasn't instantly viewed as a masterpiece, but even that's a genuinely jaw-dropping intergalactic tale despite its nonsense ending. The Dark Knight Rises is considered another of his lesser works, but considering the ridiculous expectations which were lumped in that movie, Nolan should still be commended for rounding out the trilogy in a respectable and mostly satisfying way. So that's our list. Feel free to jump in the comments to let me know if there's any directors I missed off, or just to take the mick out of my pronunciations. And while you're there, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. I've been Josh, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Aren't you a star? Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below, and also there's probably more content flowing up above my head, so why not check that out as well? Could be a laugh. Probably. Six out of ten. Thank you.